Listen, amber lighting is really cool and you might think that it's the perfect setup for your rig. Today, we're gonna test both the amber lighting on the 4Runner and the white lighting on the Bronco to find out which is the best for the off-road trail industry. Make sure to stick around, watch the whole video because at the end, the results, they might be surprising. All right, so we're gonna go over white lights first. And the first reason why you should definitely consider buying white lights over amber lights is the fact that they illuminate the objects in front of you much better than amber lights. Now, there's a bunch of boring science, and I mean like a bunch of boring science. Bill Nye the Science Guy. But we're not here like the Bill Nye Science Guy show, so we're just gonna point out a few key points that you guys should really know about. So most off-road lights, especially LEDs, run around that 5,000 to 6,500 Kelvin compared to amber lights, which typically run around that 2,700 to 3,000. So what exactly is a Kelvin? Well, in off-road lighting, Kelvin refers to that actual color temperature. It doesn't measure brightness, it measures the color appearance of the light. Just because white lights have that higher Kelvin doesn't mean they are necessarily brighter. It just means that the white light has like shorter wavelengths. This cooler, more natural color helps light up everything in front of you more accurately and sharper, enhancing shadows and edges so you can really kind of dial in on stuff. So when you're out riding desert trails, open logging roads, or rock crawling in the summer, white lights are definitely gonna help you see much better in those situations. But there is one thing that white lights really suck at. White light scatters in dust, fog, rain, or snow. All that crisp white light hits moisture or particles in the air and it bounces right back into your eyes. That's called backscatter. Your eyes are already working harder and your vision is worse. And if you're like me, I already struggle driving at night sometimes and especially when it's wet or I'm a little tired. That has nothing to do with the fact that I'm just an old man. I ain't as good as I once was. So if you tend to drive in dusty, foggy, or wet conditions more than not, amber lights might be the right choice for you. But are amber lights the best choice for you? Can they actually hold up to what day-to-day -day lights can do? We're gonna find out. Ah, yes, amber. The warm golden glow that says, I'm here to party. Let's take a look at what different companies mean when they actually say amber, because trust me, it's not one shade fits all. Don't forget, you can get all of these lights we're gonna talk about on our website at trailbuildoffroad.com. Coming in hot at around 2,000 to 2,500 Kelvin, Morimoto's amber is deep orange. I'm talking like if Cheetos and lava had a baby. Stylish? Absolutely. Functional? Sort of. On a hue scale, we're talking five out of five on the wow. That's orange charge. Wow. Right around 3,000 Kelvin. Baja goes for that true amber LED. Less orange, more rally racer yellow. This stuff is built for speed. Great for bombing down dusty desert trails at 70 miles per hour while pretending you're in a Baja 1000 commercial. On a hue scale, this is a three. Right in that sweet spot of function and aggression. So Tyree clocks in somewhere between 2,700 and 3,000 Kelvin. They use industrial grade amber. This is a no-nonsense lighting for people who probably operate heavy machinery and think that weather is a myth. On a hue scale, this gets a four. Wow. It's sturdy, it's reliable, and to be honest, it's kind of intimidating. So Rigid Industries is around wow. 2,800 to 3,000 Kelvin. Rigid gets clever though, real clever. White LEDs behind amber lenses. Not too orange, not too yellow, just right. On a hue scale, three to four. Casey comes in at a cozy 2,700-ish wow. zone. Their amber is on the warmer side, great for fog, sand, dust, and looking retro rat. Hue scale, solid four. So Diode uses true amber emitters, roughly around 3000 K. These guys are all about performance and clarity. Hue scale, we're gonna give them a three. It's functional, it's focused, and there's zero fluff. And as far as white lighting, well, white is white. Wow. All right, so I've had these amber lights for a while, and I can definitely attest that amber lights offer a completely different awesomeness that white lights just don't do. So like I said before, amber lighting runs around that 2,700 to 3,000 Kelvin. A much warmer, yellow, orange type tone. So in bad weather or dusty conditions like a convoy or a dry trail or, or even Midwest snow wheeling, your eyes can actually see further down the trail with less reflection. And it's easier on your vision over a much longer time. Have you ever noticed that fog lights on stock vehicles usually tend to lean in yellow? That's an easy indicator that shows you that amber lighting is built for that. It doesn't blind you and it doesn't flatten the terrain the way that white light can when it hits the fog or snow. And here's something a lot of people don't think about and that's eye fatigue. Overlanding or trail riding at night for hours, especially in wooded or shaded terrain, that white light is going to strain your eyes. When you go from a dark section to a blast of white LED, 
your eyes are gonna be fighting for your life over and over and over and over. And those little moments, those little seconds that take that time to recover could literally change a good time on the trail to a very rough one. Of course, Amber's not perfect. We're on the drive still. A lot, of, a lot of bloopers in this one, guys. Of course, Amber's not perfect either. You got rocks, ruts, obstacles. They might not pop the same with Amber lighting. So you have to be okay with trading a bit of detail for better visibility in specific conditions. So after testing both of these, it really comes down to kind of a few different categories. Okay, so for poor visibility, you're gonna wanna run with Amber. This is gonna help cut through fog, rain, snow, or whatever is in your way. Okay, so for open trails at higher speeds, you're definitely gonna wanna go white lighting. This is gonna help cut through and show you those potential obstacles that you're about to hit. So for nighttime driving, you're gonna wanna go with Amber gonna cut down on that strain on your eyes. So the smartest decision, the winner of the white versus amber lighting is white lighting with some amber lighting. Let's be honest, the perfect combination is when you combo these two lights. You have the white lights for that visual confidence, that ability to see the things that are happening in front of you, while you have the amber lights to help with eye strain, to help cut through that fog, that rain, that snow. So the ideal setup for anyone who's gonna be off-road or overlanding is to mix and match, and you will be ultimately prepared if you have white lighting and amber lighting. So, that's the winner. All right, so that's it for me, guys. I hope you guys were able to learn a little bit more about white versus amber lighting and kind of decide on what you think is the best situation for your rig. Remember, we have all these lights that you see on both these rigs and a ton more at trailbuiltoffroad.com. My name is Fred. I'll catch you in the next one, but for now, I'm gonna go hit the trails.